I wish that everybody understood that all missions are of the same worth. I had to teach my parents not to say certain things because it implied that service missionaries are less than. So if you're saying things like on a normal mission or on a traditional mission, please stop because that implies that our missions are less of less worth to Heavenly Father. Hey everyone, welcome back to Saints and Scripted. Um, we're really excited today. Of course, I'm Sabrina and we have two guests today who didn't know each other before, but they have, <laughs> they messaged us at the same time with the request to be on for the same reason. So we just had to combine them. So we have Maya and Rachel and I'm going to let them introduce themselves a little bit and then we'll talk about why they're here. So Maya, do you want to go first? Sure. Yeah. So my name is Maya. Um, I just finished my mission about a month ago. I spent the first 10 months of it as a proselyting or teaching missionary in Austin, Texas, and then um, about the last eight months as a service missionary here in Utah. Hint. <laughs> <laughs> and then Rachel? Um, I just finished my mission also about a month ago, and I started as a service missionary in Utah and stayed that way for the whole mission. Woohoo! So yeah, um, if you didn't get the hint, we're talking about service missions. And before we continue, comment real quick if you've ever even heard of a service mission before. Is this something that you know anything about? Have you served a service mission? Love to know. But let's let's kind of hear your experiences because we already have that Maya started as a teaching with a companion in a different place and then became a service mission, so service missionary. So do you want to just tell us a little bit about your experience? Yeah, yeah. So like I said, I, I was called to Texas initially, and I started out with a companion and everything. And um, basically, after I finished my training as a missionary, so like three months, um, I kind of started to feel sad a lot. And um, I met with a therapist and was diagnosed with an adjustment disorder, which I'd never heard of before. I actually don't know much about that either. Yeah. yeah. Basically, like I was just having a really hard time adapting mm -hmm. to the routine and everything. Mm -hmm. And so I tried to work through it for several months, and um, we decided that I would be a more effective missionary um, doing service. So um, I transferred to a service mission, and it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's so yeah. cool. Do you feel like when you transferred to become a service missionary that you were, like, a lot happier and had a lot more peace and that maybe this this disorder was a little, like, lightened? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't, I won't say it was like a seamless transition, oh, yeah. you know, like, it was hard coming home early still, mm -hmm. um, and explaining that to everybody and everything, but um, I definitely, now that it's all said and done, I definitely feel like that was God's plan for me. Yeah, that's awesome. And we do have a lot of videos about, or more videos about um, being return, early return missionaries, and that's a really important thing to talk about, too, because you're amazing, and that's Every, every bit served is amazing. So, okay, so that's your story a little bit. Now, Rachel, you want to give us your little breakdown, and I'll go into, like, more detailed questions. Sure. Um, I started as a service missionary. I put in my papers for, like, a general proselyting mission, but they recommended that I do a service mission. And so I started, I think, January 6th, and... The way they do it is, like, they give you a bunch of different opportunities to serve at, and you pick some. Oh. And so I did that and stuck oh, with cool. them ever since. Oh, that's so cool. I just, I have so much to learn. Okay, so I want, I bet that all service missions, because you just said that there's, like, different opportunities, that every mission, like, also looks really different, even though, I mean, like, every proselyte mission looks really different. Every service mission probably does, too. So maybe kind of, like, what is... A day in the life, a typical day in the life of both of your service missions. You go first. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so like she said, it's it's structured very differently for every missionary. And that's one of the best parts, in my opinion, mm -hmm. is um, you get interviewed like when you start your service mission and they kind of figure out what you like. And so um, my service was at an animal rescue called Friends in Need and the Humane Society because I love animals. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Yeah. And so um, each day was a little bit different. Sometimes I would get there like really early in the morning, like 7 a.m. to help mm -hmm. walk dogs and everything. Um, but other days, like I would work in the temple at night and 
Wow. So there's a lot of variety. Oh, that's so awesome. If yeah. I could have spent a mission with dogs. I know. <laughs> so much peace in my heart. That's so awesome. So yeah. it was kind of like, so how long were your shifts at the at the Humane Society? Um, They were five-hour shifts. Five hours? Yeah. So when I'd wake up early, um, I would go straight there, and then I would come home and do a personal study, mm-hmm. like um, proselyting missionaries yeah. do. and. We were assigned a companion to study with. We didn't oh. have to like physically be together, like but a video call or something. Yeah, oh, yeah, cool. So we do. And that. could you choose if you wanted to study together that day, or did you always have command companion study? Um, yeah, we we kind of chose the most convenient day and time. So. Cool. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Wow. Okay, Rachel, what's your day in the life? Or was? Um, it depends. Yes, yeah, so you're very <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I had three assignments when I was serving. I had four days at Temple Square Campus, which is now Publishing Services Department Service Operation. Oh, well, that's a, that's a mouthful. <laughs> yeah. Gary, if you're listening, please change that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's kind of like, they have a bunch of different departments, and I mm-hmm. was in the business department, which houses the team that works on Gospel Library. Okay. So I trained people in the error feedback system and did that for four days. I also worked with a group called Book of Mormon Central. If you haven't heard of them. We love them. (laughs) Yes. I actually worked on some videos of Casey's. Oh, cool. And so Book of Mormon Central and then with that long publishing name. (laughs) And then your third one was? I had a shift at the temple, which I still have. Oh, Cool. Okay, that's so cool. And I love that. you are They're so very different. So it kind of is giving me like, um, like you kind of have a job, right? Like a, like a volunteer job um, where it's you basically just a desk get job. to just help people. That's super cool. You both had your service missions in the place like you went to your own home with your family to sleep, right? Mm-hmm. Um, do you know if anyone has a service, is a service missionary and doesn't live where their family does? Yeah, I don't know if you want to answer that. Or... I knew one person who, like, their family moved away from them, so they had roommates. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then I, I have some that were, like, um at the same service sites as me that were from different states, but there weren't, like, a ton of um service opportunities, so yeah, they okay. came to Utah because <laughs> there's right. a little more to do here, I Yeah, guess. And, and it's more, like, normal for yeah. people to have the service missionaries come. Okay, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, okay, how about what, if you can come up with one thing, what is your favorite thing about being a service missionary? Um, probably for me, it would be the love that I felt for people while I was serving. I mean, you you definitely can feel that when you're a teaching missionary too, yeah. but I feel like it was really heightened for me, um, doing service and stuff. You could just feel the love that God had for the people that you're helping. Yeah, that's awesome. And for the dogs. Yes. <laughs> he loves dogs, too. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Rachel? For me, it was probably the people. Because they're just so weird <laughs> in the best way possible. <laughs> like, you could probably walk through the office with your eyes crossed and your tongue hanging out. And nobody would look at you weirdly. Because they'd just be like, yeah, this is normal. Wow. <laughs> okay. So that that's like... Loving and accepting of all types of people and all types of personalities, yeah. which is how we should all be. So that's really cool. Okay, so we were talking a little bit before, um, and Rachel, you, you mentioned something that might go with this question, but um, what is something that you wish more people knew or understood or felt about service missionaries or service missions in general? I wish that everybody understood that all missions are of the same worth. I had to teach my parents not to say certain things because it implied that service missionaries are less than. So if you're saying things like on a normal mission or on a traditional mission, please stop because that implies that our missions are less of less worth to Heavenly Father. And that's not true. Yeah, that's really important. Yeah, my one of my um, service mission leaders said that um, the teaching missionaries are like the word of God and service missionaries are like his hands, which I really like because they're both important. We need yeah. both of them. Yeah. 
Yeah, and you know, on on my on my mission, you're supposed to do something for service like every week, but it was like not allowed to do it on Saturdays and other things like that. And it was kind of like, I don't feel like we served enough, or like or me, I don't feel like I served enough. So I I feel like oh, yeah, you guys are the hands. That's really cool. If any of the experiences that you guys have been sharing with us today like resonate with some of our audience members, which I just know it has to, especially considering how many people wanted us to talk about service missions. Um, what would you say to them? Um, I would say do it. <laughs> At least pray about it. Um, maybe talk to your bishop if you're thinking about doing a mission. But I don't know. I feel like this was such a good fit for my personality. Mm -hmm. Like, I wouldn't say I regret doing a proselyting mission first, but like, in a way, it just feels like this mission was created for me. Because I mean, it kind of is because yeah. it's so personalized. Very so tailored, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I would definitely say think about it, pray about it. Yeah. Maybe ask about it. Yeah. I would say the same. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so even though you get to go home to your families at night and you kind of got to choose which path you wanted to take for your service missions, I know that it's still like a whole day thing and it can't be without its challenges, right? So if you're comfortable with sharing anything that maybe was still difficult in your service mission, um, just like things you had to overcome, then that would I would appreciate that. I had a lot of mental struggles. Part of it started because there's no recognition for your service, which like, that's not why you do it, but like, yeah. it's hard to do it without it. Yeah. So I got really, really depressed, like to the point that I was suicidal. Um, and I'm still dealing with that. And my anxiety went up a lot. <laughs> um, that was the main challenge for me. Yeah. So when you say that there's, like, no recognition, like, when you come home, it's, like, like, you don't have a plaque or anything like that? It's just... Well, I do have a plaque. It's just that, like, I could probably count on one of my hands the times that someone has said thank you to me for doing a certain thing or fixing a certain error or something like that. Okay. So do you think that some of that could be, I don't know, fixed if people had a better understanding of service missions and kind of what they were and the dedication that it still requires. Yeah, I think it was because the emails we sent us, the feedback people behind Gospel Library often sound like robots. Mm -hmm. I got called a robot actually once. Oh, wow. Yeah. So they just don't recognize that there's a person doing this. Mm -hmm. I am curious just on this note. Because it sounds like it caused a lot of, like, mental challenges for you. Would you go back and do it again? Like, is it something that you would recommend to people to do a service mission? I would recommend it to the whole world if it was applicable. But it's only... I think some people can do it and some people are meant for other things. So mm -hmm. if you feel like it's meant for you, then absolutely do it. Would you say after the fact that you, even though you still went through some really difficult mental health situations, would you still say that um, you would, like, that you're glad that you did it and that you feel like it was made for you? Yes. Yeah. But it was just still hard in the moment because we're still human and people need to treat everyone like they're human, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then Maya. Yeah. Um, I would definitely say that there are still hard parts about a service mission. Mm -hmm. It's Not just, easy. yeah, it's hard in its own way compared to proselyting. You know, it was so hard being away from my family, but it's also hard when you come home. And yeah, I guess when I came back, I kind of had to go through a little bit of a process because I also kind of in my mind, I think was holding a service mission at less value than proselyting. And so I had to kind of like in a way accept that forgive myself for having issues that I couldn't really control you yeah. know that made me need to do a service mission but through the process I learned that it's equally important it's just different mm. it's really interesting to think about how even you being the person who is serving a service mission thinking like oh I'm not as I'm not the same one that's like so not true and you had to like teach yourself that and I think that if you had to teach yourself that like the more that we need to teach everybody that too. Okay, so I've learned a lot. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being here, for sharing your experience, for like being open with the things that were great and the things that were not so great. Um, do you have any just 
lasting thoughts or experiences that you want to share to anybody? Anything you didn't get out yet? I would just say this, the overall experience of serving um, a mission taught me that Heavenly Father is completely aware of your needs. Um, He knows you very personally and he cares about all the details, even the little things that might seem insignificant. He cares about it and he's aware of your struggles. Yeah. I would say for me, I had a little bit of a faith struggle also on my mission. Um, And the thing I learned concerning that was like, even if you can't gain answers to the things that you're needing answers to immediately, go back to what you already do know. I do know that God exists and that he loves everyone and that he loves the person who's watching this in particular. Well, thank you again, both of you, so much. Um, If you guys have any other questions, things that I didn't ask or things that you would like to know, is there a way that they can reach you or will you be in the comments if they respond? Yeah, I'm I'm a little bit of like a grandma with social media, so I only have Facebook. Okay. Um, But yeah, I will be on Facebook too. So if you're on Facebook and you're watching, then maybe she can respond there. Yeah, and I also can respond to comments, so. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I will probably just respond to comments as well. Yeah, so leave any comments, any questions, anything that you have to say. If you serve a service mission, like I said, share your experience too. And be sure to like and subscribe. And thank you guys again. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>